He may have been trying for Kenny Roberts, but it appeared like Perez wanted to avoid the rush and throw that ball away as we wrap up the top 20 scoreboard. The Gamecocks win big over East Carolina. Same play that you saw, the option, and Perez has been pretty clean the entire game. He will take a seat this play as number nine blitzes in from the corner. A nice job of, of defense by UNLV. It hasn't been that way the entire game. We don't was, even have a nine on the, uh, well, the roster. Is that, that was Tyrone, Tyrone Carter? Carter? All right, Tyrone. One of the rosters he was not on. Dave Logan pulled it out. Here's a catch by Kenny Roberts inside the five and down to the two. He's hobbling as he walks back because Ken Tucker and Anthony Drawhorn lowered the boom on him, but uh, he's inside that five. You love this as a quarterback. If you've got a receiver, they'll go across the middle, and Perez is going left the entire way. Kenny Roberts knows he's going to get popped right there as Carter puts the lick on him, but Roberts hangs on to the football. He's being helped off. You might as well catch it because you're going to get hit whether you catch it or not. Roberts showing a nice job right there of determination. San Jose State three yards away from their fifth touchdown of the game. And Kenny Jackson has three of their first four. He's not going in this time. As he has bounced out, a flag is thrown late, though. Let's wait and see. George Verone made the hit out of bounds. Actually, two flags are thrown. We could have two separate violations here. And Claude Gilbert wants to know what happened there. As we look at Kenny Roberts over on the sideline, a senior out of Campbell, California. Well, I'm guessing on the toss that you're going to have offensive holding initially, and then you're going to have a late hit. As Jackson, again, they've been extremely successful with this toss. That's a and pretty that heavy tackle, tackle right there, there on the head. Might be flagged. That's uh, one of the Pulling, calls. Holding, offense, face mask, defense, they offset. Replay, first down. George, All right. George Verone, number 45, went to the head and evidently got the face mask. And we will line up and do it again. George Verone, a good story. They call him the hitman. He has dedicated the season, Verone, number 45 of the Rebel, to his father, George Sr., who died after 10 years of suffering in August with a, a kidney disease. Verone, number 45, also the junior college roommate of Mike Perez at Taft College. And they throw in the end zone to Bill Plump, touchdown. I could have thrown that, and I could have caught that. Of course, not, not at the same time. No, I'm not that quick. <laughs> you hit a touchdown. UNLV trying to do anything and everything to stop the run, and they sent what's commonly called the kitchen sink. You can watch from the back. Everybody is coming, and nobody picks up the tight end. If you drop that one, you have to go home. And again, we're looking over at the uh, San Jose State coaches next to us in the booth. Herman Edwards, the former great defensive back of the Eagles, is smiling ear to ear. Oh, he should be. Boy, they look prime tonight. Alavarez, number five. Point after touchdown. He is five for five. And the Spartans lead 35-7. <laughs> Good time here in San Jose. Five Spartan touchdowns. Three Kenny Jackson runs. Two Mike Perez passes. One eight yards to Guy Leggett. A moment ago, he found his tight end, Bill Clump. There's Alavarez again to kick off. He's got this down. George Thomas, two yards deep, coming out. Flag go down as he does. He didn't make the 20. Knocked out of the 16-yard line. San Jose State offensively, they've been able to do just about anything they want. The dive action, Perez will simply lob the football over the top of the defense to a wide open Bill Clump, and it couldn't be any easier. If you drew it up on the board, that's exactly how it's supposed to look. And they have made uh, a nice showing so far on offense in the first half. A nice showing so far on offense? They have been Nothing. amazing. First down. As UNLV will go closer to the goal line here, there's seven they will start it. They have had the ball six times, Dave. Five, they have scored touchdowns. The one time San Jose State did not score was their own fault. They committed that illegal man downfield following a great run, and they had to settle for a long field goal attempt by Oliveira, which he missed on. They've been incredible. Lone setback is Woods behind Richard Williams. They have four wide receivers. And they're going to run Woods up the middle, and he picks up good yardage at about the 12 yard line. Next Saturday here on ESPN a doubleheader. Air Force and Brigham Young to begin. Wishbone attack of the Falcons. They have a good quarterback, Dee Dallas. 
Once ran for 247 yards. Then at 7 o'clock, SEC matchup. Florida, 7.30, pardon me. Florida versus Auburn. Emmett Smith, the great freshman versus quarterback Jeff Berger, who should be back following his one-game miss this week. He, what, he went hunting this over the week and uh, was penalized for that. Here's Ricky Woods again. First down, 25. Breaks a tackle. And he's out of the 34-yard line before Chris Alexander pulls him down. And we saw the two strengths of Wood, the strength and the speed. This is what Wayne Nunley would like to do, although the score is 35 to 7, get Icky Woods involved. And you can see at 225 pounds, he runs right through arm tackles of Rasnick and Taylor. Now, if you're a defensive back, I don't care what the score is, you don't like to see this big fella come through the line untouched. That's a pretty good way to get a good look at Icky Woods to get a severe heading. First and 10, 34-yard line of the Rebels. Again, Woods the lone left back. Four wide receivers, no tight end. They run Woods again. He picks up some good yardage, about five. Out to the 38-yard line. Running back coach John Montgomery of the Rebels says Icky can be the most dominant player in this league. Motivation is a problem with him. Wayne Nunley said, I'm going to try and get him mad before the ball game. And if he wants to go, he can be as good as there is. Well, it looked like he was mad the, the last play. I think what you're seeing right now is Wayne Nunley saying, hey, we're not going to get caught up, although they're 35 to 7 down, in throwing the football each and every down. We simply can't play that way. We've got to pick and choose our spots to play and win at halftime, try to regroup. 155 to play in the hands. Ball is dropped by George Thomas. That was some pass by Williams right between two defenders, Greg Cox and Jay Taylor. And if Thomas comes up with that football, he has his second long touchdown catch in front of the ball game. And if Jay Taylor comes up with the football, yeah. he's going the other way. This is a, a little bit of both. Thomas on the right side of the screen, an excellent throw. Taylor goes for the interception. Mm -hmm. Thomas, I think, was shielded a bit by Taylor's arm. Had a chance to make a big, big play for the Rebels. The Rebels want to score before the half. This is a big play, third and six. They're going to run the option. They pitch to Icky Woods, and he does not have enough room. Near sideline, Alexander hits him hard, but not late. Chris Alexander having a strong ball game. The senior out of Gilroy, California. Icky Woods shoved out. It is fourth. Is it fourth? Do we have a flag down here? Oh, they called a penalty against San Jose State. I didn't see the flag. A late hit, apparently, on the Spartans. Something they do quite a bit on defense. They're an active bunch. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. First down. You know, sometimes you get the reputation yeah, they as a late-hitting club, and the referees will simply, each and every chance they get, expect that the hit is late. Icky Woods trying to get outside. You'll see the stiff arm. And Chris Alexander, if they call that a late hit, where's the late hit? Or even a hit out of bounds, we can't see the flag oh, there. That's a very poor call. He didn't get a hit over and they're both people in play. I think you're right, the reputation cost him there. There's the pitch to Woods behind him, but he comes up with it. And he's driven down by David Cox, the ball game, replacing Epi Pa'u'u. Knox a junior out of Stockton. Mickey Woods has carried the ball quite a bit. But he's going to be tired. As you can see, George Thomas trying to get involved blocking. That's a great block by a very small wide receiver. As Cox makes the tackle. Thomas trying to stay involved. Has great speed. And I said, I think even Luke Perdue's young man next year to make a name for himself in the National Football League. The Reds are looking for him now. It's getting late. 109 to play and rolling in the first half. 42 yards away. Williams drops straight back. Looking at the sideline. Now throws over the middle. It's caught by Tommy Jackson. And he's inside the Spartan 30, and he has the first down. Lock rolls. They'll stop it momentarily here with 54 seconds to play in the half to move the chains. Jay Taylor made the tackle on Tommy Jackson along with Larry Sanson. Nice drive here. Impressive drive by the Rebels. They need this one, too. Nice catch by Tommy Jackson. His hero, Tony Dorsett. You can tell by the number. Jackson, a good-looking running back. Both backs for the Rebels can catch the football. And an impressive drive so far. Well, Tony Dorsett gets his real Cowboy teammates back tomorrow. To the last. Here's George Thomas, stepping, getting up, making the catch, doing a dance. Look at this. Inside the 10, the 5, touchdown by George Thomas. His second of the ball game. And that one may be more impressive than the first 
He made some broken field tackling here today to score that touchdown. But George Thomas has very good hands, but his ability lies with what he does after the ball. He slips down initially. Now watch the move right here as Crash misses. And Thomas, so very quick, ducks back inside. He is on his way to the goal line. It's moves like that, it's plays like that, that make National yeah. Football League scouts rule. Yes. Doesn't matter how fast you are, if you can make that many guys miss on one given play, you get a chance to be a great player. Here's Jim Cook for the point after touchdown with 27 seconds to go in the first half, and he has it. So George Thomas has kept the Rebels in the ball game. That's his second right, touchdown right, right, in his seventh back. of the season. Right, 27 yards on the catch and run. George Thomas signaling that he is number one. He's number one tonight. Williams with the pass. Thomas, you can see, fell down. Watch how many guys missed this. Ducks back inside a host of blue jerseys. Five, he simply outruns everybody. Six, seven. Yeah, Tom, ran Thomas, seven as you said, is single-handedly kept UNLV within striking distance. Rich Williams ought to be glad that he's got a guy. Yeah. Because that goes down as, as a rather long touchdown, but it was a great run by Thomas. And Richard Williams is not having a, a bad half at all, although George Thomas, as you said, Dave, has uh, made him look better than he, he really has here. But uh, Williams has kept composed, and the way the Spartans have scored on his defensive teammates, it would be easy to get down. And especially against the 46, when you're down by three or four touchdowns, they have a chance to just say, okay, you're going to pass the ball, and here we come, and that's when they're at their toughest. Well, we you said that. Saxon going back to return the kick. We said that last drive. They started off with Dickie Woods running four of the first five downs established the running game and you might laugh because they were down 35 to 7 but it worked out once they run the football it takes some of that pressure off of Richard Williams and the passing game and he threw very safe passes and again when you have a receiver like George Thomas you can get the football to and let him go he's got a chance to score anytime Jim Cook in his third year with the Nevada Las Vegas football program set to kick off to James Saxon very short kick they're not going to get the Saxon again a fair catch is called once again, by one of the San Jose State up people, a quarterback, Anthony Moore, number 28. There's the scoring drive. 93 yards they went in, 314. And George Thomas has both of UNLV's touchdowns. Once a 58-yard catch, and that time, 27 yards. So Perez and the Spartans have it here at their own 25-yard line. You would assume they're going to lie down. Although with his arm and the type of offensive people he has, you never know. Now they bring him in tight, so we'll probably lie down and run off the clock here. Content with a three touchdown lead. So they're going to let it roll out. Some offensive first half we saw from the men in blue and Mike Perez. It's been a great one. The, uh, the Rebels have to go in and try to figure out something defensively to slow down this Spartan attack. And San Jose State has to realize that with enough offensive firepower on the other side, they're not out of the woods yet. Okay, that's our first half of football, a good one. Five touchdowns by the Spartans, three by Kenny Jackson. You and these scores two, both by George Thomas. 35, 14 and a half. Let's now head back to our studios and the marathon man, Tim Brando. All right, Greg and Dave, thank you very much. Well, it's finally come to an end. The basketball powers reign on week eight of college football Saturday. Let's see. Indiana won, Syracuse won, Louisville even won. If Georgetown and Providence had been... Halftime Scoreboard is brought to you by Railback. We give you the power. Jim Brando back in our studios, and let's bring you up to date now on the major teams that were in action tonight. Let's begin at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, where the Bearcats were putting it together early against the Hurricanes from Miami of Florida, looking for their 26th consecutive regular season win. Second quarter, Canes down 10-7. Steve Walsh... Hands to Melvin Bratton, who cuts outside, picks up a quick 21 yards. Miami would take the lead on this drive. Third quarter, Walsh hits Brian Blades on a 13-yard scoring play. That would make it 24-10. The game marked the emergence of freshman running back Leonard Conley. Here he bolts 26 yards, and that puts them in great shape. He had 120 yards in the game. Fourth quarter, Conley would score from 37 yards out. Jimmy Johnson's just reloading it. It's not Warren Williams, and it's not Melvin Bratton. It's a guy named Conley. 48 to 10, Miami with the win, their 26th consecutive regular season win. The biggest story of the day is the upset of unbeaten Clemson. I guess you could have seen it coming. They had been tested severely by teams in the ACC that many felt were inferior. 
But the North Carolina State Wolfpack had also been disappointing up until about three weeks ago. Then their coach, Dick Sheridan, made a change at quarterback. Since then, that scenario changed. Well, today at Death Valley, the end of one unbeaten scenario occurred. Jay Jennings has that story. Most so-called experts thought it would be Death Valley days for NC State. The Tigers looking to pay back the pack for last year's defeat. But it's the red and white rolling right from the get-go. Now Clyde leading the way as State rams it down the Tigers' throat. Bobby Crumpler scoops 15 yards in the option, 7-0 pack. Second quarter, Todd Barn hammers in for the 1, 14-0. Very next pack possession, the Wolves on the prowl again. Preston throws to Chris Quarters, touchdown, 21-0. Meanwhile, the Tigers can't seem to do a thing right in the first half. Here's a key play, just seconds play in the half. Now Clyde breaks it. Can you believe it, sports fans? 30-zip NC State at the half. But what an amazing comeback by Clemson after intermission. The Tiger D completely shuts down the pack attack. Meanwhile, quarterback Rodney Williams lights a fire under the big orange. With Death Valley rocking, Clemson piles up the points. But somehow, some way, State hangs on 30-28. It's feel great. Any win over Clemson, especially in Death Valley, against a top-rated team like that, had to feel great. The guy stuck in real good and hung the gallon towards at the end. You know, had the sweetest victory I've been involved with since I've been here. You know, we came in physical approach, hitting them up the middle. You know, going right at them, and it worked. And, uh, you know, it feels great to beat them. So the Wolfpack, a 19-point underdog, pulls it off. They had that 30 to nothing lead. They are now 3-4 and four of the year. Clemson drops to 6-1, and one, and they had seven home games. Well, Dino will comment on that a little bit later. I think you'll enjoy what he has to say. Now, let's talk about Colorado and Oklahoma. You saw it earlier here on ESPN, the number one Sooners and some history. First night game ever at Owen Field. First quarter midway through, still no score. Third and two from the Colorado 23. Jamel Holloway pitches to Anthony Stafford. He goes 23 yards into the end zone. Six TD untouched. Oklahoma leads seven to nothing. Colorado tries to stay in the game, but the Sooner defense holds at their 15. Third and seven. Salonisi. Daryl Reed with the tackle, and Colorado settles for another field goal. And then Jamel Holloway on his way again, keeping it, taking it 28 yards for the touchdown. He rushed for 146 yards. Sooners score to make it 17-6. Oklahoma and the Sooners still number one, but Colorado hung tough in this game. The final score, 24 to 6. Now, Mississippi State played Auburn today, and Auburn was playing without Jeff Berger. The reason, perhaps, some improprieties with the NCAA about a hunting trip taken by Berger back on October the 11th. So, Jeff has sat out and is waiting for the NCAA to determine if he'll be able to play next week against Florida. That didn't really seem to matter because Harry Muse, the freshman, 15 yards for the score here, 106 yards from use on the day. They really didn't need Berger at all. Reggie Slack took up the slack. For Berger, he passed for 185 yards. Here he picks up 35 to Lawyer Tillman, 14-0 Tigers. Slack continued to perform admirably. Here he'll hook up with Alexander Wright, a 46-yard strike, 21-0 Tigers, 28-0 in the half. They go on to win it by a final score of 38-7. Now, with respect to Berger, Pat Dye understands that he should find out along about Monday or Tuesday. He asked for an immediate ruling from the NCAA. They said, no way. You'll have to wait a while. Jim Thompson's the offensive tackle that also had to sit out of that football game. UCLA and California. Interesting game. A wild one. And that's the way it usually is in the Pac-10. The game began as the Gaston Green Show. Clearly his best performance, putting a step ahead of the crowd, out west at least in the Heisman race. 79 yards there. That made it 7-0 UCLA. Second quarter, Cal on fourth and short. But Trey Taylor's pass into the end zone, intercepted by Dennis Price. Watch the blocking down the sideline. Beautiful. And then the rest is outright speed. Credited with a 100-yard return was Price. That made it 21-3. California made it close, though, in the third. Taylor scrambles left. Can't find anybody. Blockers do a good job of not getting downfield for the marker, and there's the touchdown pass to Michael Smith in the corner. One foot in is all you need. 21-18, but the Bruins put it away on the next drive. Troy Aikman to Paco Craig. It's a 46-yard score. UCLA goes on to win it, and the final score in that game was 42-18. to Bino Cook and Lee Corso are standing by. They'll join me next with the Railback Halftime scoreboard continues. It's San Jose up by a bundle against the Running Rebels. Stay right where you are. 
along with Lee Corso and Beto Cook. We're going to try to put in perspective this day. Top 16 stay in great shape. They're, they're all right. But we had today the biggest upset of the season to this point of an unbeaten team and the most intriguing story of the year. First, the biggest upset. What happened to Clemson today with NC State? Clemson, unbelievable. Getting beat 30 to 28 at home. They planned this season the way you plan for a war, an invasion. We get seven games at home. We bring down Duke, give them money. They beat Duke by a touchdown. Now they figure, hey, we're in great shape. Wake Forest next week, and they get beat by North Carolina State. No second national title in the 80s for Clemson. Now, when you start talking about Indiana, this man, believe me, Hoosiers, I know you're celebrating <laughs> now, but he's the, he's the only coach that gave you a bowl win in about 100 years or so. Well, I was very fortunate at one time. But uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. They beat Ohio State and Michigan in the same year. That's a great effort. I'll tell you what, and it's not, they're for real. Indiana's a good football team and a good program, and Mallory will have success with Bill on success. He's on his way. Now, impact games next week. Let's quickly run them down for you. Florida at Auburn, Syracuse, Pitt, they're trying to stay unbeaten. Michigan State, Ohio State, Indiana, Iowa, UCLA, Arizona State. Now, when you start talking in the SEC, Auburn's in a must-win situation here. They may not have Jeff Berger. We'll probably find out on Tuesday of this week from the NCAA. Look for him to be playing. Syracuse, Pitt. Syracuse has won the last three games, and two were upset. At Pitt Stadium, it's going to be tough for Syracuse to win this. They will be favored going into the game, but Pitt did trap Notre Dame at Pitt Stadium. And the story, Lee, is not over in the Big Ten, no, even though Indiana had the no, win. No, sir. Today. Michigan State at Ohio State. Michigan State blew a chance today. If they couldn't beat Illinois, they will not beat the Buckeyes in Buckeye Stadium, in my opinion. And Indiana has a tougher game this week, beating Iowa and Iowa City, than beating Michigan at home. Yeah. So watch for Indiana to get upset this week here. They might be too high, and the Hawkeyes will be ready. And UCLA, Arizona State, gentlemen, it seems that every year, right when you think UCLA is loaded, they're going to the Rose Bowl, something happens to them late in the season against usually one of the Arizona schools. Yeah, and this game is at Arizona State. It's going to be very difficult for UCLA to win. But as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, UCLA plays one more conference game than Arizona State. I don't understand that. I think they all should play the same. Why the Bruins play one more, I don't know. But this is a very difficult game for UCLA. I know he thinks UCLA is yeah, great, mm -hmm. but they're going to have a <laughs> tough time at Arizona State. All right, so that pretty much puts it into perspective. Those are the impact games next week. So we're going to be keeping up with it all this next week <laughs> before we join you again here with Bino Cook and Lee Corso out at that Air Force game coming up the first half of our double hitter. Lee, thanks for joining us. Bino and I'll be back next week, and I'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. The Halftime Scoreboard has been brought to you by Rayovac. We give you the power. With all of the excitement in Indiana over their mighty Hoosiers and making the history beating Ohio State and Michigan for the first time in the same season, everyone's forgotten about what Notre Dame did to USC today. Let's talk about that game and show you the highlights of the greatest intersectional rivalry in college football. Here's the way it went as the men of Troy took on, well, we're showing you Michigan right now against Indiana. Well, I'll tell you about that game. There it is, Jamie Morris being stuffed. And watch now as David Schnell bolts in from the three. That makes it 14 to 10, Indiana with the lead. Late in the fourth, on a fourth and 11, Demetrius Brown finds Jamie Morris, but he stops short of the first down. And the Hoosiers tear down the goalpost, and Indiana goes on to the victory by a final score of 14 to 10. So obviously, there was so much fall to roll over the Indiana win that even we got caught up in it and decided we'd show you the Indiana Hoosiers. All right, by the way, Georgetown has a Division III football team. They won today. St. John's has a Division III football team. They won today. Kentucky nearly pulled an upset. Louisville won. Indiana, we showed you that. All of the great basketball programs who have football teams are having great days with one possible exception. And as I turn it back to the men that are calling the, the game of the team in question, just what is the problem with the running Rebs on the gridiron? Well, I'll tell you, it starts on the defensive end, Tim. They have not slowed down Mike Perez and San Jose State at all. Perez has thrown two touchdown passes, 247 yards. Jackson has three touchdowns. They've scored five times. They've had the ball six. Well, UNLV wanted to come in and force Mike Perez to either throw the football with or without the running game. They haven't stopped anything. UNLV 
defensively has not been in the right coverages. They haven't disguised the, disguised the coverages. You can see, and uh, this is a pretty good indication as to how easy it's been for San Jose State. The entire half, Bill Clump wide open. As I said, on defense, UNLV has got to either stop the running game or try to force Perez out of the pocket. They've had very little pressure on the quarterback the entire night. Five touchdowns for San Jose State, two for UNLV, both scored by their wide receiver, George Thomas, who is frankly keeping them in the football game. Well, he's a great athlete. You'll watch Richard Williams look for George Thomas. He has found him twice tonight. And on both catches, Thomas has made exceptionally talented moves. Look at this. You can't oh. teach kind of this kind of running. Thomas is able to get into the end zone. And you said he has virtually kept the Rebels in the game. They're three touchdowns behind without George Thomas. This would be a blowout. We, caught, we counted seven blue shirts that Thomas danced around for that, his second touchdown. Perez and the Spartans, 329 yards total offense. Only 193 for UNLV. Their problems, defense. We'll come back with the second half in a moment. As if they need it, San Jose State will get the ball to begin the third quarter. Jim Cook will kick off again for the UNLV Rebels. They are down 35-14. Back deep, number 44, Eddie Blackshear. Number 20, James Saxon. Saxon, the better of the two. Wayne Utley told me yesterday they'll probably try and kick away from Saxon, although he has returned the ball once in the ball game. And the second half from San Jose is underway. Short kick, and Saxon gives way to Blackshear. Up to 20, and he's spilled out at about the 22-yard line. First half numbers. 247 passing yards for San Jose State. They average 294.7, eighth best in the nation. 329 total, only about 100 yards short of their entire output, which is good for 13th in the nation. They scored five of their six possessions. They were hardly even impeded by UNLV's defense. We'll see what happens here to begin the third quarter. And they run Kenny Jackson, and he is more than impeded. He is nailed from behind of the backfield for a loss. Look at the drive chart here for San Jose State, Dave. Unbelievable. Well, this is an ugly board if you are a UNLV fan. You can see they missed a field goal on their second possession. 14 plays, 11, first and third. All you see is TD after yellow line scoring drives. And uh, UNLV, you hate to call it a crucial defensive stand, but early in the third quarter, they've got to find a way to stop this offense. Here's a second and 14. They stopped him on first down. Perez firing on second in place to James Saxon. Flag is down, though. Audney Wren made the tackle. Got to be holding. Well, the UNLV defensive people are applauding, and Tony Carrenti, our official, says holding. About the only time the Spartans have not moved the football has been their own mistake. The one time we saw in our drive chart the field goal missed they had, an illegal man downfield was a penalty which killed him, and now Holding drives him back. Well, based on the uh, success they had in the first half, they probably just think this is more yardage they can put on the board. Move them a little bit farther back. The, the scoring drive is that much longer. Well, they've got a lot of confidence. Holding, offense, repeat, second down. They should have a lot of confidence. Watch the center, Don, Don Teague, as he blocks on Ike Freeman. Actually gets a lot of help. You could call Holding and a couple of guys in that, yeah. uh, that particular play. Jim, Jim Carter. Carter. Number 67, Carter was a former tight end using his hands in a different way. You know, they never call those guys unless they do something wrong. Yeah. The luxury of being an offensive lineman really isn't. Here's Perez in his own end zone over the middle of Kenny Roberts. Catch, first down. What a catch by Kenny Roberts. Two Rebels nailed him. Ken Tucker and Sean Blunt. He makes the catch and he picks up the first down. Well, this is a great pass. You saw Kenny Roberts get nailed on a quick slant in the first half. Roberts breaks to the post. He'll catch the ball. Tucker is right there to greet him. That's just a superb job of holding onto the football. Perez gives it enough velocity that it's be it beats the coverage. That's a collision right there, and you've got to give all the credit to Kenny Roberts. Yes. Has certainly showed his toughness here tonight. 26-yard pickup for Roberts. He left the game earlier, remember, with a bad ankle. Saxon can pass. He's going to run, though. He thought about it. Now look at him break tackles. Four Rebels drive him down. A late hit there. No flag down. As we had a real pop. George Barone made the tackle. Number 92, Eric Collins, speared him late, but no call. 
Also, Doc Wise in on the tackle. As James Saxon, a bit groggy, heads back to the Spartan huddle. He lost three yards on that catch. He ran the ball six times. A little better than four yards per rush. Second down and 13. Good screen down or draw down. San Jose State doesn't run the draw too many times. They've run the screen one time tonight. It's had great success. A nice time to do it to pick up half of the yardage. Max in the eye. They play action to Saxon. Perez is flushed. Off the run. Fires. Sky Leggins is all by himself, and he dropped the football. He was too wide open. He is known for his hands, Guy Liggins. Although they tell me here in San Jose a couple of weeks ago against New Mexico State, he dropped a sure touchdown. This one's a sure first down. Well, they fake the draw to hold the linebackers. Liggins will have a crossing route. And you'll see Liggins do something here that he doesn't do many times. Now, there are some receivers that can hear a cat sipping milk at 100 yards. Guy Liggins is not one of them. But he'll look back right there, takes his eye off the football. And again, everybody's entitled, I guess, to drop one. Liggins doesn't drop many. Spoken like a true wide receiver. Play action. Two play actions on the fake reverse. They need 13 yards. And they're not going to get it. They don't get anything. As Perez throws far sideline. Good coverage there on Donald Stewart. And the Spartans are forced to punt for the first time in the football game. Let me introduce Tom Deal, the punter. I wonder if he remembers how. He's punted 35 times this year, 37.7 down from 40.7 last year. Anthony Drawhorn, a good return man, is back. Well, Deal has not forgotten how. Good kick. High. Great hang time. Here comes Drawhorn. 30 yard line. Flag is down. 40. Midfield. Breaks a tackle. He'll go all the way unless Deal can run him down. He won't. Touchdown. But remember, a flag is lying back. And Anthony Drawhound has no idea this one may be coming back. Let's wait. All the defensive people for San Jose State are running to the line of scrimmage. That was a 75 yard, but I think Drawhorn will not be given credit for. Well, it's coming back, and that's yeah. certainly a, a big play in the game. That cuts two touchdowns. Drawhorn is the cousin of Sidney Moncrief, the Milwaukee Bucks. Good athlete. You can see Wayne Nunley doesn't care for that call at all. He realized this is a huge play. You score here. The defense just came off the field after an exceptional job. Let's see if we can pick it up. Excellent punt draw horn. We'll catch the football. Now look to the right of the screen. Let's see if Cox is clipped. Draw horn. Right there. Well, it's a little uh, shove. It's a know. little shove. Now, there are times you make the call, and I guess you could make the call based on that, but... Uh, that's a close one. That's a killer for UNLV. If that's the one they picked out, that may be tough to stomach if you're Wayne Nunley, and even tougher for Anthony Drawhorn. That was Derek Nicholson, a reserve defensive lineman. Nunley is hot. He's a former fullback. He didn't want to see that happen. His team needed something like that for their special teams. Here they run Icky Woods across the 20. Good yardage, 26-yard line as he drags Epi Pa'u'u. Out across the chain for the first down. Icky Woods has been an impressive running back. In the first half, he ran 11 times for 59 yards and once for 21. And again, Icky Woods has the power to break arm tackles, and yet he's fast enough once he gets to the corner, he can pick up positive yardage. Backs going to the eye. Tommy Jackson, the fullback. The Woods, the fullback, and Jackson. And Bernard Jackson out of the ballgame to tail back if they run Icky Woods again. Right side. Here's UNLV's drive chart. Six and a punt. Three and a punt. Five, and they lost the ball on downs. Looks a lot different than San Jose. Doesn't yes, it? there's a change of color. Touchdown to George Thomas, 58 yards. Then a loss of down. Those loss of downs were on punting situations once they bluffed the punt and nailed. Rhines and once a bad snap, he was forced to run it and make either one. And the last touchdown has them within range. He called on by three touchdowns in range against this team. Bad snap behind Woods. Gets a bounce. Oh, he dives on it. And he kind of waited for a moment before he launched back on that ball. Nunley saying, hey, how about the pitch? Well, Wayne Nunley is telling Richard Williams, hey, step up and pitch the football. They had to close side. And actually, this would have been a big gainer if Williams made a good pitch. 
can't really see. It is behind Nicky Woods. Now, Nicky decides he's going to dribble in a minute, try to pick it up. He drops it. He waited. Then he said, well, I better get on it. He beat John Bucchini to the football. They played 420. Third quarter. 30-12. They need the 37-yard line. The clock is down to one of the 25 seconds. Our sideline, George Thomas has it, and Barry Kidney has him. Well short of a Nevada Las Vegas first down. So Richard Williams throws to Thomas, but for nothing, really. Williams has made his share of good throws. He'll backpedal out. That gives him the ability to throw left, which he was going to do the only time. Good feet. The feet are solid. Makes the throw. He's going to come up short. You can see George Thomas is the guy that you want to get the football. Swoops down. Might have had a chance to squeeze in that first down. UNLV's had pretty good success the last couple of times before the, the halftime ended at moving the football with a nice combination of running and passing. Ryan has the snap and blows the punt. Short, rolls, well, one hops it, across the 30, and he is met and dropped at his 32-yard line. 9.37 to play, third quarter still, 35-14. A PCAA football game on ESPN is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by NEC Home Electronics. Certain things in life simply cannot be compromised. Spartan offense has not made too many compromises as they begin with a handoff to Kenny Jackson. And he picks up three left side, running behind Mike Bernard, number 70 left tackle. Well, San Jose State's had good success at running the football. When you're head 35 to 14, you want to give your offensive linemen a lot of work. They're required to pass block a majority of the time in that offense. Those big fellows like to fire out every now and then and hit some people, and they've been able to do it tonight. We talked about Perez throwing for 247 first half yards. The Spartans rushed for 82 off 27 carries. Here's a fast play action. Flag goes down. Perez is going for it all. Willie McLeod leaps. He can't come down. Anthony Drawhorn was there. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Tony Carrenti says holding. holding. They'll take that and force second down over again, but this time they need 17 yards. If you wondered about the arm strength of Mike Perez, I think he put anything in, t in terms of a worry to rest. He threw that football 65 yards in the air. Perez is a legitimate pro prospect. We've been talking about a Bill Walsh of the 49ers. Holy who offense, repeat second down. Perez during the one week when he didn't have to coach in between the last uh, week two and the first week of replacement games, saw Perez live play Stanford, said he is a first round and a very high first round draft pick in the National Football League. Atlanta, the Falcons, who have not signed the number one pick of last year, Chris Miller, uh, have shown the most interest in Perez as far as scouting him. There's play action. Pump bait. Let's see if he can run. He slides down. Don't like that. Don't take that hit. He's smart. Picked up good yardage, about eight. That'll bring up a third down. Otney Wren was the man closing on Perez and forced him to slide down. Perez benefits this year from coming out as a senior with very few great senior quarterbacks. So I would imagine he will be a first-round draft choice, and he's learned his trade nicely. He'll have to do a lot of that in the National Football League should he decide to scramble. Mike Perez, a big, strong quarterback with a tremendous arm, and they say an exceptionally quick learner. Sporting News is coming out with a piece this week having him as one of the top four passers in college football this year. Third down. He gets it off. He's incomplete. He's fired. Donald Stewart. The crowd here wants interference on Malcolm White, a senior out of Redlands who may have climbed the back of Stewart, but they say no. And for the second straight time, we'll see Tom Deal. Now you see how big that punt return, which was called back, could have been. 35-21. The defense again has, has stopped San Jose State in both of their first uh, possessions here in the second half. Anthony Drawhorn. They gave him credit, I guess, for a two-yard return. In actuality, he went 75, but there was a clip and a controversial clip on the return. Here's Deal. They don't go after him, and he gets it off. High again. Draw horn from the same spot. This time he fair catches. 
First and 10, 28 yard line for UNLV when we come back to San Jose. Alongside Dave Logan, Greg Papa, back in San Jose, California. The Rebel defense have gotten the act together in the second half. Let's see if that offense can bring them back. They're down by three scores. First and 10 from their 29. Here's Ricky Woods, still on his feet. Look at this, 40. He has open field, midfield. He may go all the way. Taylor bumps him out. He had the angle at the 18-yard line. Nicky Woods appeared to be going nowhere. It was all bunched up in the middle day, and then he just popped outside, and he had a lot of room. We've talked about Woods the entire evening. One back set, the simple lead to the left. Woods gets in behind everybody. In San Jose State, defensively, they quit. Well, here he comes. He bounces out. And I can tell you, for such a big man, that's tremendous speed. Jay Taylor will come from the left side. Taylor is a sprinter, and he saves a touchdown. Icky Woods has really put on a show here tonight. 54 yards, his longest run from scrimmage this year. He's out getting a blow here as Darren Brightman comes in number 32, and he has his first carry. Brightman, a sophomore, knocked down by Mike Hutcherson. Last week, the PCAA Co-Defensive Player of the Week with three quarterback sacks. Here's how coaches think. Wayne Nunley is saying, hey, if I can just pop this one in the end zone, 35-21, I've got a quarter and a half to go. My defense, all of a sudden, they're ready to go. They've stopped San Jose State. I'm back in the game. When it looked like at 35-7, this one might be a track meet. Matt Arena, Cross State rival of the Rebels, losing today. And That's got to be a flag. Yes, there it is. Williams over the middle to George Thomas. And pass interference on Ryan Rasnick, number 24, who likes to hit. And he hit a little bit early while the ball was in the air. Costly, costly penalty. Rasnick's a tough kid. And a young man that flies around. Claude Gilbert won't care for the call, but he had horse collar. George Thomas at the line of scrimmage. Tough matchup for Rasnick. Man-to-man -man as Williams will lock the football. Can't really Pass see it. Defense, the left hand of Brian down. Rasnick clearly on George Thomas. And Richard Williams, again, looking for the bread and butter man. He wants to call. Hey, where's the flag? Did you see who's looking for the flag? The flag has already been thrown, Richard. Hang on. He's got it down. He's got the Burt Jones Act down already. <laughs> Junior college transfer. First and goal for the Rebels at the gate. Here's Zicky Woods. Dragging players as he goes near the five, down to the six-yard line. Well, Dave, UNLV is down near that goal line, and they absolutely have to score a touchdown right here now if they want to win this game. I think you have to give Wayne Nunley and his staff a lot of credit. They could have thrown in the towels. I said 35 to 7. They come back with an outstanding drive in the first half to close the first half. And defensively, again, the Rebels here in the second half have really played a tight, tight game against San Jose State. Second down, goal, ball between the six and seven yard line. Mickey Woods again. He does not have much. They're going to have a tough time running the football in down inside that 10, Dave, against the 46. Well, that's a good point. Even if you're big and strong and you've had great success, it gets tough to run the football down there. Woods off the left side. And you can see a number of blue jerseys close in. You've got to throw a third and five with an extra wide receiver, try to get somebody in the flat, maybe roll your quarterback yeah. out because Williams can run a little bit. This is a this is a very, very big play right here. Two two down territory, so they're going to go for it, I would guess, both times. You know who I look for? The tight end who has not had a very loud game. Cedric Davis, a big guy, a very good tight end off play action. Let's see what they do. Third down and goal. Straight there drop, throws over the middle. That's Davis, touchdown! Cedric Davis! Sensational! Not play action, straight drop, and a good pass by Williams. The defender was there, but Davis, so big, caught the ball. Davis at 6'5", they got him matched up against Barry Kidney. Now, Kidney's a great linebacker, but he's not a cover guy. You can watch on the right-hand side. Williams will simply throw it up, kind of a version of the alley-oop, and Davis will go up and over Kidney. actually takes the football off of Kidney's helmet. A bit unfair to require a linebacker to try to cover the tight end when the tight end is such a great athlete. Here's Jim Cook, 12 for 12 on point afters. Now make it 13 for 13. And we have a football game here. 5-16 to play, 35-21 now. The 
230. Just get it up. Let him go up and get it. That's an outstanding catch by Cedric Davis. I think one of the better tight ends in the country. Wayne Nunley needed that score to get back in this game. And you can see now he is ready to go. Hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new game. He's, He's calling on his defense. Fellas, let's go. They're back in this thing. And this game is paramount for Nevada Las Vegas to win if they want to win the PCAA. They have to win this ball game. They've already got one conference loss. San Jose State is 3-0. Here's a pooch kick again taken by Donald Stewart. 20-yard line, 25. Head down, he has the 30-yard line. As we look again at Williams' third touchdown pass of the night. Richard Williams will actually throw it off the wrong foot. But he gets it high enough to kidney. And Barry Kidney had pretty good coverage on Cedric Davis. Again, athletic ability dictates a lot of times as to whether you make a big play or not. Certainly that time it did. That was the capper, 71-yard drive. The big play in the drive, though, 54-yard run by Icky Woods. Here's Kenny Jackson of San Jose State not getting much. What is UNLV doing defensively in the second half, Dave, they did not do at all in the first half? Well, they're basically in the same defense. I can just tell you that this guy, I'm sure, judging from our conversation yesterday, had a few choice words for his kids at halftime. He got them going. It's almost like they each and every one of them had a shot of adrenaline. They're flying around making the, the big play, and now it's up to San Jose State to get things going again. If he's that good of a motivational speaker, he'll be a big on the banquet circuit. There's Perez going downfield, caught by Kenny Roberts. He spilled in Rebel territory by Anthony Drawhorn at the 48-yard line. Boy, this is a great throw. Kenny Roberts in the slot. Ducks inside, takes the pattern far enough inside that he has yardage to work with on the outside. Look at this throw. Over to the initial line of defense before Drawhorn can get there. A great throw and a tough catch by Roberts. 21 yards to Roberts, his third catch of the evening. He had six coming in their first seven weeks. Here's Kenny Jackson in the secondary. And he powers his way down to about the 35-yard line. Another first down for San Jose State. Sean Blunt. Made the tackle on Kenny Jackson. And the Spartans starting to answer the challenge behind Carter, Teague, and Barnard. There is Jackson into the secondary. San Jose State offensively in the first half doing pretty much what they wanted to. This is the best drive, the only drive here in the third quarter. We have exactly four minutes to play in the third quarter. 35-21 San Jose State. Play action to Jackson. Perez. Throws over the middle to Roberts. He's got it again. What a second half for Kenny Roberts. That's his third catch of the second half. Well, you're going to see two great plays on this particular play. Perez will hold the football to the last minute, allowing Roberts to clear the linebacker. Perez takes a pretty good shot after he throws the ball. He's holding, waiting for Roberts, waiting, waiting. There's the hit on Perez, and Roberts, again, on the crossing route, has been sensational tonight. They send Guy Liggins deep. They run Roberts underneath Liggins, and Perez is down. Mike Hemmings ran him down number 40. Number 22 yard game to Roberts. Whoa. Kenny Jackson gets nothing. <laughs> Got a Mike bear hug for Mike Freeman. Mike Freeman put him down. Freeman is a small guy. He's playing a lot at 6 feet 230. Well, he can be a force along that line. Claude Gilbert calls the plays. Gilbert was the defensive coordinator here under Jack Elway, now the Stanford coach, but Gilbert has a very strong offensive mind, obviously. Well, you got to like this offense. Really, this game pretty much typifies what you'll see virtually every week in the PCAA. A lot of scoring. Track meet kind of put that. Look at those numbers. Porter, 16 yards. Saxon, passing, and Slump can pull it down. The halfback option to the former high school quarterback, James Saxon, who twice last year threw for touchdowns, once this year against Cal. Hit that man, Bill Klump. He just overthrew him here. On the toss, and they've run it a lot tonight. You can do this when you've been successful running it. Saxon left-handed, Klump is running for all he's worth. He just can't reach the ball. Pretty good coverage by Charles Zimmery here. UNLV doing a nice job of sniffing out that play. Well, we watched their walkthrough practice, the Rebels, yesterday, and they were defensing that about four or five times. They knew that is certainly a big part of Claude Gilbert's trickery. Third and 10 from the 11. Perez over the middle. Flag down, ball caught by Liggins, short of the first down. And all the Rebels are saying holding against San Jose State. We'll wait and see 
what Tony Carini, our official, has picked out along with his refereeing crew. 2.41 to play in third quarter. Oh, boy. That is just the opposite of holding offense. It is defensive face masking. It gives the Spartans an automatic first down. That's big. I don't think it is. I think it's 35. So Claude Gilbert's team has a reprieve here. Guy Liggins will come underneath the coverage, underneath the linebacker, and simply try to find the open spot. You can't expect every pass to be on the money. Certainly Liggins that time did a nice job of turning back, securing the football. And it's going to be a first down because of the penalty. I wonder who grabbed the face mask. Or will it be a first down? Well, apparently, it is not an automatic first down. I may have spoke too early here, but it is a five-yard penalty, and they come again on third down. Not an automatic first down, rather a third and six from the seven. But they can pick up the first and not score a touchdown. Two and a half to play and rolling. Play action. Here comes the option. Far sideline. Perez breaks the tackle. Lunging for the first down. He fumbled the ball. We have to wait and see. They call Perez down, and they say fourth down. The fist went up by the referee. Fourth down. Now you've got to make a decision as to whether to kick what seems to be a sure field goal or to try to pop it in. Perez. Again, a big, strong quarterback has the option, decides to keep it, and put the ball away, Mike. Is drugged down. He clearly is on the ground before the ball pops up. Yeah, he was down. Drawhorn has the football. I think San Jose State will go for it. They're going for it, and a field goal here puts them up by 17 points, which is more than two touchdowns and an extra uh, two. Uh oh the Rockets, they're not going to get this at all. They're not even close. They pitched to James Saxon. UNLV's defense has been a different group in this second half. Well, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Second guessers delight. Fourth and a foot, you figure you can get it, but do you toss and allow the ball to be tossed four yards in the backfield? Tyrone Carter, with tremendous penetration, will slow down Saxon. In comes Charles Dimery. And should the score change drastically, that will be a play that will be talked about a lot in the locker room. Quite a gamble by Gilbert as Williams hands off to Icky Woods. And he picks up only a couple. And we disagree. I think he should have kicked the field goal and put the Spartans up by 17, which is two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. You think he made the right choice? I think he made the right choice when you're that deep in the territory of the opposition. Fourth down and a foot, you've got to be able to make a foot just about every time you line up. If you can't make a foot, you got no business running that kind of offense, and uh, they've certainly been successful tonight at running the football. Richard Williams, 7 of 1,335 yards, three touchdowns. And we have flags thrown everywhere. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense, repeat, second down. The officiating crew's been busy tonight. They usually are when San Jose State is involved. We talked about it before, the most penalized team in the country. And Claude Gilbert was saying he feels the PCAA conference draws a lot of penalties. The Spartans and the Fullerton State Titans always pick up a lot of penalties in the top two or three. He feels that because they pass the ball a lot in this conference, a lot of uh, late hits, a lot of pass interference, big penalties. Hickey Woods again. That time for very little, setting up a tough third down with 65 seconds to play. Third quarter, Epi Pa'u'u made the tackle. Barry Kidney has been an outstanding player the entire season. He has uh, certainly got to know Icky Woods quite well tonight. Takes a lot of guys to get Icky Woods, but he moves the pile when he hits the pile. That time, Kidney, right where he should be. Well, it was Alexander who made most of that tackle. Woods, 18 carries, 136 yards. His fourth time over 100. Second consecutive week over 100. 39. Williams is going down. Stephen Guthrie. 97, one of the people in there to set him down. Richard Williams, to throw a deep pass, has got to get back. Watch how many steps he takes from the line of scrimmage. Two, three, four, five. He's looking to throw, and those feet are going everywhere. 
That's a sign of good pressure by the defense and maybe a bit of a nervous quarterback on the part of Richard Williams. And maybe our last play of the third quarter, two seconds, one second. Rhines will not say hike in time. The third quarter is over. Only touchdown of the quarter scored by the Rebels. It's 35-21 after three. Greg Papa, Dave Logan back in San Jose. It was 35-7 Spartans, but Nevada Las Vegas has scored the last two, and we do have a fourth quarter. But the Rebels have to punt to begin the quarter up against their end line. Tony Rhine, the freshman kicker. He'll punt to Scott Wells, standing at his 46-yard line. Rhines, bad kick. Wells moves up at his 41. On the run, 30. And he's down to the 25-yard line. You know, the offensive line takes the credit or discredit for most sacks. Richard Williams drops four yards to throw the ball deep. You could have the wall of China in front of you. That's simply not enough yards backing up. And, of course, from the coverage like this, an excellent job right there by number 35, Everett Burns. He knocks George Thomas completely out of bounds, of course. That makes him ineligible. 25-yard line, point-blank range for Perez. Flanker screen, Guy Liggins. And he's out at about the 16-yard line. No, I think he stepped out for four. One of the officials is standing back at about the 19-yard line. Tyrone Carter, number nine, made the push out on Liggins. But well, Liggins gets up limping, using him on the quick screen at 6'3", and I said over 200 pounds. You might want to duck out of bounds before you meet two folks like that. I can assure you if he... Uh, gets to the next level in the National Football League, he will duck out of bounds before he meets two folks like that. He's got a sore leg as a result of that play. They went right at his knee. And you know what? That hit didn't even count because he didn't duck out of bounds, but he stepped out of bounds at the 19-yard line. He's tough, though, Guy Liggins. Only 6'2", 200-pounder. That's big, though, for NFL receivers, right? really is. You know, as a wide receiver in college, they teach you to cut block, and you're always trying to cut people, and you make every extra yard you possibly can. The National Football League, you've got to use gotcha. common sense and get out of bounds when you can't make anything more happen. Your guess is as good as mine is why we're waiting. Well, they haven't pulverized the Rebels, but they've had the upper hand from the beginning. Perez has thrown two touchdown passes. Kenny Jackson has run for three. Here's Donald Stewart, the fullback. He's a big guy. But he's outmanned. He's short of the first down, bringing up a third down. San Jose State Perez, what a ball game. 323 yards, Jackson, 57 yards, three scores. George Thomas, 103 yards in receiving, couple of touchdowns. As Ben the story from San Jose. Wayne Nunley, coaching the second time against the Spartans in his second year last year. Had him on the ropes, up 17-3 at half at UNLV before losing 2017 late. Kenny Jackson, first down to the 11. Malcolm White made the tackle, but it was way too late. When they had to pick up the yardage there, they blew some people away along the line, Dave. More times than not, when San Jose State gets in the eye formation, they run the football. They've had great success tonight running behind the left side. Jim Carter, left guard, Mike Barnard, maybe the best offensive lineman they have. And you put Donald Stewart in the game, number 34 at fullback. You've got some big. Spartans going for the knockout punch here. Up by two touchdowns. 13.35 to play. Illegal procedure. Scott Small, right tackle moved. A count early. Also, Bill Clump, the tight end, may have jumped. That'll set them back. As we look, look at. San Diego State. Talk about track meet football. Wow. 52 points. You know, we're going to have San Diego State coming up November 14th against Colorado State. Todd Santos has to average before this week 203 yards passing a ball game five final weekends to break Kevin Sweeney's all-time passing record. That's the fourth weekend from now. Next to last ball game. He may break it here on ESPN. Here's Perez. Play action. Throws, end zone, tipped, and incomplete. Bill Clump was the man they were going for. And the comfort certainly closed nicely. Charles Anthony, a freshman defensive back, broke up the pass.
he's dangerous once he gets outside the pocket. And Anthony does a nice job right there getting the left hand in. Klump looking for his second touchdown. Bill Klump is a guy that uh, is an excellent blocker. Doesn't get a lot of chances to catch the football. Now we have a whistle here. Before the snap, they threw a streamer on the football field, and they'll pick that up. That's something we're used to seeing in basketball. Actually, a roll of toilet paper. Something we're used to seeing in basketball. That's a big roll. That is a big roll. They'll roll it off the field. While we have a moment, coming up in two weeks from tomorrow, our coverage of the National Football League begins. Real players back tomorrow, just in time. And our first game's a good one. New England versus the New York Giants, who are 0 and 5. They say it's tough to repeat. Year. They say it's tough to repeat. It's almost impossible. They're going to have to win the last 10 to make the playoffs, it looks like. Here's Perez over the middle. Broken up. Free ball. Caught. Touchdown. Bill Clump. He wasn't going to Bill Clump, was he, Dave? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. When you're living right, things like this happen. He's going to Willie McLeod. This might have been the worst decision Perez makes the entire night. He tries to force the football into McLeod. You'll see excellent coverage right there off McLeod's shoulder pads. Look at that. Look what I found. Bill Klump with the touchdown catch. That looks like Dave Casper in San Diego for the Raiders against the Chargers. Is that unbelievable? You know, tomorrow it looks like a great one-handed catch in the end. It was a great over catch. Somebody. Great concentration by Klump. Here's Oliveri. Point after touchdown, good. And it's a 20-point ball game now with 13.06 to play. Tonight's PCAA football game is being brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. And by Dickies, that America's favorite work clothes, but who says you have to work in them? Sergio Oliveira set to kick off again following San Jose State's sixth touchdown. Third passing, Perez to Bill Clump in a roundabout way. And you add insult to injury on that crazy tip touchdown catch. The Rebels roughed up that match. Sergio Oliveira is on the point after, so he'll kick off from the 40 and not from the 35. Kicking off to George Thomas and Mike Rennie. And he makes use of the five yards and drives him right up against the end line. No return. So many things go through a quarterback's mind when he drops back. Mike Perez with the play action. I've got to find William McLeod. Looking for number eight all the way. I've got McLeod. Should I throw it? Yeah, I'm going to throw it. Forces the football in right off. And I mean forces it. There are folks everywhere. McLeod has it go off his shoulder pad. That's kind of like the CNI single that drives in two. Tomorrow it looks like a line drive to left field. Bill Clump with a 16-yard touchdown catch and a backbreaker. That's his second of the game. He's been wide open on both. That one, uh, not by design. Williams to pass. They better start passing. Here's George Thomas. First down. And a face-masking penalty is called. An obvious face mask there. Bill Frash. He likes to hit. They call him Billy B. 